Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tito Claw. So please welcome your host, James Deacon. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the show. It's Tito Clock, and it's me, Tito James, with the rest of the team X, Y, and Z all the way through to 6 p.m. tonight. How you all doing out there? And where are you doing it from, Tito Clockers? Good to see you all there. In fact, let's say hello to a few of you out there. Let's do a bit of a pulse check, as they say. You know what I mean? Just do a bit of a pulse check, see who's out there. I don't do that accent very well, do I? Um, yeah, we just want to say firstly hello. We want to welcome you all. And we want to prepare you for a massive, massive show. But we are not talking about the regular sort of massive. This is huge, right? Because not only are we going to be discussing a very, very important topic something that really kind of captured the headlines um recently on facebook at least or social media but we're also going to be giving away a massive 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 prize courtesy of cwc interiors so it's so cool because what's ending up going to happen here is uh, we're talking about interior design and somebody gets to win one of the classic interior design chairs ever like the best ones office chairs herman miller's i swear by them they're really good and uh, that's not even a plug. I mean, it's not like a sponsored plug because I bought mine. That's how much I love them. So thank you very much to CWDC Interiors for sponsoring this particular raffle. It's going to be epic. And uh, somebody's got to win it. May as well be you, right? That's the way I see it. So if you haven't already joined, go back there and join. And we will see you uh, on the flip side. We're coming in here round about, I guess, towards six o'clock. We'll probably be wrapping that. But we won't be wrapping that off from the comments over here. Sorry, I'm just having a problem with my uh, another device over here. Of course, it's three o'clock, so we're going to have a problem, right? On some sort of technical problem. Also, so um, now let me just make sure I get that in so I can greet the Tita Clockers. Uh, we got seven, two, three, five, one, seven. Why does these things ask for passcodes again? But it's one of those things. Let's just get in here. And uh, X, can you send me a code so that I can uh, also, I just got logged out of my, my iPad thing. So if you wouldn't mind sending me a code, that's what you'll call it. All right. Thanks for being so patient, everybody. We're a little bit late and we had some technicals. So here we are now. Once I get this going, we'll go straight into the headlines. Don't you worry. We got that. Plus, we, of course, got Free Plug Friday lined up. So everything's happening all at once. As a matter of fact, I'm still having trouble with my thing. So what we'll do right now is we'll just welcome in our headlines for the day. And for that, we need we can't do that even. <laughs> She's not there. Okay. I can't see from here. I don't know what that is. That just looks like okay. We're we're just having I don't know, every time it rains or something, there's some kind of a technical problem here. It's just one of those things again that just uh, can't even describe it. It's one of those normal things of technology nowadays as we're trying to adapt to this new normal. You think we'd adapt by now. It's been around like this for a long time. So here, let's try one more time over here. Okay, there we enter without cam. And then make sure that that's what you call it. Okay, there you go. That works out now. Okay, X, how are we doing there? We're okay, we haven't got Chris there lined up. So let me greet some people. You love the chair, Sun or Sun. I'm not sure if you pronounce that right. Paolo, Kat Dizon, Ellen, Dega, Dane, Serrano. Thank you very much. Says my voice is so mm, wow, thank you. Need that chair, somebody else said. Um, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Rocket bit something on the, uh, I'm sure. We'll blame it on him. There you go. That's better. Okay. So let's, uh, let's keep on going, say a few, uh, do a few more hellos out there. No sound, somebody says. Uh, I'm not sure what that's happened there. Can't hear you, Tita James. Somebody else said. Um, so, yeah, we've lost our microphones for some. Unmute. Okay. Okay, we're good now. We're good now. Okay. 
one day it's a dream i have this 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 dream that we're going to start and we're going to have a trouble free non no tech problem uh broadcast at eight o'clock okay while we're waiting over for um chris who also seems to be having some problems as well what we will do is we will jump over straight into free plug friday but for that of course we need xx you ready what you got there in the box x okay x <laughs> Hi, Lady James. We actually have a lot in store for today, as always. But before we go there, I just want to say hi to all the Tito Walkers. Welcome to another edition of Free Plug Friday. Woo! All right, guys, feast your eyes on the screen. First off, we want to start with something fresh. By fresh, what I mean is fresh catch. <laughs> so literally, we have Yo Peepon, who literally just sent in these massive live giant crabs. These big prawns, giant squid, salmon, and tuna sashimi, to name a few. Because we'll be back for every piece of Oh my gosh, this, the list goes on. Anyways, Peter James, I'm sure you've seen it, how the giant crabs are much bigger than your hands. They were. Oh but it's not size, it's the freshness. It's the freshness. The freshness that got me. Because, you know, I mean, size doesn't matter when it comes to stuff like that, for me at least. Mm -hmm. It's how tender it is, how juicy. And we cooked this uh, earlier and didn't put anything else on Nothing. it. It was You didn't want to corrupt it with anything else. It was so good. So good, guys. So hope you guys can check them out. You guys can literally have seafood right at your doorstep. Not just any seafood, fresh seafood. Food, guys, and the good news is, Peter James, why don't you break the news to them? Because we they have, have news. Yes. Right, what we got? Oh my gosh! Oh no way! A raffle! Whoa! This is gonna be awesome. Good news is they want you guys to try them out too, and they're giving away two thousand pesos worth of GCs for three lucky Peter Flockers. So you can literally have seafood every day at your home. Oh, this yeah. is this is this is a great catch. So guys, hope you guys can put like just comment down below while we're going on. Anyways, hope you can check them out. Yo, keep on on Facebook and Instagram. All right, next up we have Thai Takoyaki. Speaking of seafood, once again, we have these guys who offer takoyaki delivered straight to your home since most of the takoyaki places are normally found in different malls, stalls, but now at least they can offer it hot and fresh. But Titi James, I remember we, we got sent these kinds, just the kanyaki, the octobits with pork floss, and this, the special baby octopus takoyaki. Which one did you like most among the three? Um, the one with the octopus was really nice, mm. uh, really, really deadly, and uh, yeah, that was my favorite. Yes, yeah, so and guys, the pro tip, you guys have to try it while it's still hot and fresh, but don't worry, they normally don't deliver late. Hope you guys can check them out. Price starts at 60 pesos, right? And look at how Rocket's just so jealous, huh? I think you want to try it too. Anyway, guys, hope you can try it. Hope you can check out Hai Takoyaki on Facebook and Instagram. Next, we go to Victoria's Kitchen. Victoria's Kitchen are these very beautifully bottled gourmet Filipino products that have they have they offer chili garlic sauce and the bagong alamang. Mm, I tried this one. It's yeah, really it's really good. good. Yeah, I just put this one on the uh, shrimp, the oh, shrimp yeah. that they sent. Yeah, I didn't want to touch the crab because it was just so pure. But I tried it with the shrimp. Yeah. Oh. Well, actually, anything you put it on, you just sprinkle it on and, and stuff. It just brings things to life. Hope you guys can check them out. All right, guys. Peter James, how about we? Would you like to give away your personal stash to them? <laughs> so putting about, you on the spot, yeah, right? No pressure. <laughs> what personal stash of my uh, bagong and my ano? Yeah. Why not? You know what? It's made for sharing. There's plenty for everyone. Awesome. For reason, yeah. So I, I would love to because um, I want people to try this. Yes, you guys have to try it out again. Victoria's Kitchen on Facebook and Instagram. Next, we go to Chicken Chingu. <laughs> chicken Chingu is the Korean is the Korean fried chicken that comes in different flavors. Tita James, I think we had it lunch, dinner, even tried it. Even the guests <laughs> had it. We had some. <laughs> I think she enjoyed it yeah. too. Great right, guys, they can try in different flavors. She's the original soy honey butter parmesan barbecue, crunchy garlic sriracha, and the spicy yang yom. And they even set it together with soju bottles. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. That's a nice compound. A little companion to have yes. there. Uh, personally, I like the original mm -hmm. and the buttered farms. Oh, me and I love their soy honey and the crunchy garlic. This is just uh, like have my name on it. And <laughs> the sriracha. If you guys are too particular with spicy food, that's actually pretty good. Kick. It's got, got a kick. kick. Yeah. It's got a kick. All right, guys. Hope you guys can check them out. They're available on Lala Food, Grab, 
Food Panda, and they also have stores uh, around Metro Manila in Quezon City, Makati, and Aurora. So, if you guys can check them out, the price starts at 108 pesos for three pieces and 218 pesos for seven pieces. And there's even one that has more than that. Hope, hope you can check them out, Chicken Chingu, on Facebook and Instagram. Next, we go to Cucina Estacion. John, so you got to say it with a list. Gotta, gotta say it with oh, a list. <laughs> 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 Alright, they offer their cheesy tuna beef and chicken turnover mm. and their creamy salmon pasta which one did you like among those Tito James um, I, I tried all of them um, I kind of the, the beef was interesting because it, mm. uh, yeah I like the beef turnover and nothing wrong with chicken one was good too just they did something a little different I think with the beef turnover oh. I don't even know what a turnover technically is uh, maybe it means that it thinks it <laughs> gets turned over many many times for it to get cooked I don't know it just sounds really fancy but it's, it's actually pretty good I personally don't eat beef but uh, my personal favorite would be the cheesy tuna turnover and of course the creamy salmon pasta because it had the perfect perfect combination there's a big chunk of salmon they big. put a huge nice real legitimate standalone chunk of salmon that you could have you know as, as a, a meal. meal yeah yeah and plus your caper feed you James I know you like that I love capers mm-hmm. yeah. with salmon perfect. perfect guys hope you guys can check them out Cucina Estacion on Facebook and Instagram don't forget the list the list Feel. Feel. right last but not the least we go to Yesaya Mash great so she personally sent in her acrylic face shields the one that you tried on these days so you, i know you have different angles now we're looking at the photos <laughs> how did you find them how did you find the fit Tita james well they, they, they're, they're nice and you know what because everyone's got that same brand i mean like that one stole the market completely yeah. anything to look a little different is a plus and a positive exactly. for me and not that you want to be positive during covid but you know well, you know what i mean a positive like a good thing that's what i meant yeah <laughs> and yes it's actually pretty sturdy and it actually feels a little thicker right than the actual of the usual it does you know these are all personal preference i mean we're not going to try to say this is going to be healthier than that or that no. it's, it's all personal preference it's all of what fits your face best exactly. what's comfortable but uh yeah for me i saw a little bit of extra value in the fact that it's just everyone's wearing the same type mask nothing wrong with it but i might just be a little different it is different yeah okay hope you can check him out you sign mash on instagram so basically that's all we have for this week's edition of free plug friday hope you guys can come and join us again on the next week's edition peace out this is it happy weekend bye thanks x appreciate that Free Plug Friday, of course, is open to anyone. If you have a product service and you're a small business trying to just sort of make it out there in the big, big world, then just send us what you got and we'll help you out. We'll just put it on Free Plug Friday. There is no uh, nothing necessary. I mean, you don't even really need to send the item if you don't, if you can't. That's okay. We just want to help you out. Obviously, it helps when we photograph it for you and stuff, but it's not a pre requirement prerequisite is the word there you go we just want to help you guys out and uh yeah it's been working for a lot of people so also if you are not just somebody who's selling but you're somebody who's buying do consider buying from the free plug friday people because uh when you spend local you really help local and then we all grow from there it's a nice way to build the economy back up and with that said we now move on to the latest in the headlines before we do that i just wanted to add because the face shield i said i did like and there was some it does have one feature that the other one doesn't have, which is you can lift it. So, yeah, it, that that was one thing I failed to mention, Kanina, is you can just put it up like that, and like a welder. And uh, for some people, that might be a good advantage, you know, when you need to do something and whatever. All right. Now we move on to the latest in headlines. And for that, uh, we need a Chris. Chris. Welcome. What we got there? Hello, hello. Good afternoon, Tita James. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> hello, over. everybody. <laughs> I, okay, now I hope we're all ready for the headlines. Here we go. OCTA research team, an independent group of researchers, has observed a declining number of new COVID-19 cases nationwide, but recommended the imposition of stricter quarantine measures in select areas. It noted that the number of cases in the country has decreased to 2,500 new cases per day, while it has decreased to less than 1,000 in the pandemic epicenter, Metro Manila. The researchers urged the national and local governments to strictly monitor and enforce compliance with the minimum health standards, such as physical distancing, 
wearing of face masks and face shields, and proper hygiene at the community level. The group also urged the private sectors, especially businesses, to step up efforts to complement government initiatives. The latest monitoring report of OCTA research, which is composed of academics from the University of the Philippines and the University of Santo Tomas, recommended stricter quarantine measures in high-risk areas that includes Batangas, Benguet, Baguio City, Cavite, Davao, Iloilo, Laguna, Misamis Oriental, and Negros Occidental. Scientists from the University of the Philippines said that the government should invest in rehabilitating mangroves as part of the solution to the woes of Manila-based shoreline instead of overlaying crushed dolomite rocks. UP Diliman Institute of Biology expressed willingness to assist the Department of Environment and Natural Resources in forming and implementing a science-based rehabilitation program. The program would target the recovery of the base biological functions and services by restoring and protecting key habitats, reducing pollutions, and managing invasive species. Mangrove rehabilitation is a cheaper, nature-based solution that can contribute in biodiversity conservation and in climate change adaptation. According to the UP Institute of Biology, the dumping of dolomite in Manila Bay has effectively covered part of the intertidal area used by the migratory and resident water birds that use the whole stretch of the bay as their feeding, resting, roosting, and breeding areas, thereby reducing their habitat. Fifteen melon-headed whales were found dead in Catanduanes on Thursday, October 8th. The 15 are part of a pod of about 70 melon-headed whales that were stranded in a mangrove area in San Andres Town that were monitored starting early Wednesday morning, October 7th. Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources in Bicol spokesperson Noni Enolva said that blast fishing in Lagunoy Gulf or Makeda Channel apparently caused the mass stranding of the whales. Makeda Channel is located within the areas of Paramoan Presentacion in Tamarines Sur and Catanduanes, which is a vast fishing ground. The dead whales were found with wounds in their eardrums, fins, and blowholes. Another reason for the mass stranding, as suggested by expert, is a possible underwater geothermal activity that kept the pod from returning to deeper waters. The incident has prompted the San Andres municipal government to conduct an educational campaign that would prepare residents and government personnel on how to handle mass stranding of whales in the future. China has signed up to a deal known as the COVID-19 Vaccines Global Access Facility, or COVAX, to ensure future COVID-19 vaccines are distributed to developing countries. COVAX is a global collaboration for speeding up the development, manufacture, and equitable distribution of new vaccines. Countries that signed on to COVAX will get access to a broad portfolio of new vaccine candidates to combat the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying said on Friday that China joined COVAX to honor its commitment to turn COVID-19 vaccines into a global public good, which gives China a prominent role in the global effort to share vaccines with less developed countries. Beijing hopes that more capable countries will also join and support COVAX. The U.S. has not signed up to the deal. Beijing is facing a storm of foreign criticism over its early handling of the pandemic and has been trying to reframe perception of its role in COVID-19, which emerged in the central Chinese city of Wuhan. American poet Luis Glick won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Literature for what judges consider her unmistakable poetic voice that with austere beauty makes individual existence universal. Nobel Prizes, named after dynamite inventor and wealthy businessman Alfred Nobel, have been awarded since 1901 for achievements in science, literature, and peace in accordance with his will. Prizes for medicine, physics, and chemistry were awarded earlier this week, and the Peace Prize is to be announced on Friday. The Literature Prize has been dogged by controversy over the past several years. 
In 2019, the Academy exceptionally named two winners after postponing the 2018 prize in the wake of a sexual assault scandal involving the husband of one of its members. The secretive 234-year-old Academy later announced changes it billed as improving the transparency of the awards process. A televised event will be held with winners receiving their honors in their home countries. KZ Tandingan and TJ Monterde revealed that they have already tied the knot through a music video featuring their intimate ceremony on September 28 at the farm at San Benito in Lipa, Batangas. The music video for the couple's new duet, Can't Wait to Say I Do, which gives fans a peek at their wedding, was premiered yesterday, October 8, on YouTube. All proceeds from the video will be donated to Inspire Church Metro. The musician couple, who have been together since January 2015, were engaged in December 2019. The wedding was held amid the COVID-19 pandemic with only a handful of people and their families attending through Zoom. Tandingan opened up on Instagram that their wedding was bittersweet not to have their parents with them. Their families couldn't fly in from Mindanao but were selfless, understanding, and amazing to have encouraged them to get married. Martin Yavera took the place of her father by walking her down the aisle. And those were the headlines. It's time for the inbox, Kitty James. Kitty James, are you there? <laughs> I am. And give me a second. There you go. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Takes a little while, Welcome but back. What's in the inbox? What's going on there? All right. We have a couple of stuff here. I think there are six six images and videos. First up, right. we have the road to Nueva, uh, Nueva Ecija. Okay. Let's take a look uh, at that. Mm -hmm. Oh! There we go. <laughs> I've been offline for a little while. Uh, I miss this. <laughs> this, this, is, this, <laughs> this is funny. What is this? Is it like a <laughs> slalom or some kind of racetrack? For, uh, Another one of those, uh, yung paint scratch. ang nag-adjust. Oh, yung mag-scratch ka na lang ng head. Okay, let's move on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another one is the uh, U-turn for wildlife signage. Oh, I, I don't know where this is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, so the way some of our some of our drivers drive, they could be considered wildlife, I, I guess, right? That's pretty random. Oh, yeah. They do it aggressive, yeah. So they could be considered like that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. You have a point there. <laughs> All right. Up that next road, is road. the... <laughs> yep. Go up home, next, road. we have the Jeepney. Okay, Jeepney. The new images. Where are they? Let's take a look at this. What is this, a video? Oh, I think this is the riot video. But there's also a, a Jeep. Not sure. Okay, well, we're hanging on that. I can't quite see the video play, so I think we're having some tech problems <laughs> with that. There's, oh, there's the yep. Sabit. There we go. What happened to the social distancing there? Is it, I guess I'm guess i not the... sure why. Isn't mm. it supposed to be the driver's responsibility to... Uh, Absolutely, yeah. To kind of yeah. You know, that's not, even, that's not even allowed pre-COVID, you know, so it's, it, I don't know why Possibly. they think... Yeah, it's not. It's you're, you're not. I mean, we... we Many times turn a blind eye to it, but it's not. It's dangerous. And uh, now in COVID, you've got that added problem of, well, social distancing as well, as well as road safety. Mm -hmm. So double whammy, double whammy with yep. that. <laughs> All right. Next up. All right. Up next is the riot video, which I think uh, we were seeing earlier. Okay. It's like the Sampalans Ace Hardware. Is this uh, similar? Mm -hmm. Oh, oui, oui. Oh, wow. And it's all. Is this like a road rage thing? Gosh, I go offline Possibly. for like a few hours, and I miss it. What, what, what is this X? Do you have any context to this? Oh, they that's just just all, all without, without motorcycle a, riders. That's why. I mean, was there an accident? Uh, there's helmets flying. Gosh, I know. I what, you possibly, really possibly happen. caused by an accident. Yeah, I mean, I, I know. I, I just missed a day or so of, of of being online and or you know, but I this this, this is. It's kind of nuts. I hope somebody can provide context. Uh, this one's in Tagig, Ria says. 
Um, that's the accident. Uh-huh. Somebody fill me in. I'm a Tito in the dark here. I'm supposed to be the one yeah. telling you what's going on, but uh, now <laughs> I'm going to have to rely on you to, to somebody. To please <laughs> fill me in on what's going on. Same here. here. Please right. fill, so fill us in. <laughs> who's um, are the, whose are those motorcycles? I don't know if that's an official or not. There's a motorcycle down. Sige. Uh, if you uh, do have the info, pop it up as we go along. We'll move on to the next. I Somebody okay. said drunk driver hit a rider okay that's oh so that's why possibly okay. all right shall we go to the next one yeah that's there's a, another video that says car versus motorcycle all right car versus motorcycle let's see this this yeah. doesn't um, it it's very takes a while motorcycle. <laughs> i haven't seen it but i haven't bumped into a video yet where it ends well for the motorcycle if it's a car versus motorcycle yes so, so um, just pay close attention to the the ones on the left okay uh a motorcycle is gonna come in okay let me let me let me look at this okay counter flow all right tricycle mm-hmm. okay here comes the motorcycle oh 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 oh, oh, oh. oh yun Oh yeah, that you can see that coming to Milo, and now he's angry at the mo- uh, he's angry at the uh, <laughs> the yeah, car the uh, driver. Ay na po, Pilipinas pong mahal. Ay ay ay. Anyare. <laughs> Anyare indeed. Anyare indeed. <laughs> My friend would just uh, uh, a friend of mine would react like hey. <laughs> you know, I, I <laughs> and uh, put his face, crab. put his palm in his face. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was going to be the crabs we ate canina that were going to give me high blood, but it's uh, it's more of the inbox now that's doing it. So, <laughs> all right, so next. Crabs, though. <laughs> all right yeah. last one is a rider uh, of an e-scooter with no helmet. Okay, there yeah, we go. This, this is always going to be an issue because um, is this you a know, foreigner? I, I think it's a foreigner or bakatisoy. I hope it's not me. Not sure. <laughs> yeah, really, not me. that would be really awkward. Yeah, because um, it, it it's it's tough because we don't really have clear guidelines around these things. But yes, you should. But just common sense tells you should wear a helmet because you'd have to wear one with a bicycle or anything motorized. So you should do it. But yeah, yeah, because he he's in the main roads. And he's not he's even inside the village. But again, like they said, it's it's they, they're not too clear about this. If they're clear about this, then we're not not justifying. That's obviously you don't mm-hmm. even you need. You should know not to ride on the main road, but yeah, it's it's also communication too to just tell people this is how we want to develop this space of transportation and be yeah, clear right. about it. push it. Don't uh, let people just decide for themselves because we all have different standards. That's what we have government agencies for to standardize the practices and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I well, agree. thank you for that, Chris. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you again okay. next Friday. Yes, I'll see you next Friday, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye. Hey, all right. So we are running a little bit late, so we're just going to run through this as quickly as possible because we don't want to waste any more time. I know a lot of people are waiting for this. So let's bring in our guest uh, who's joining us. I'm not sure from where because we earlier were doing a sound check in the car, but wherever she is, please welcome up Isabel Cagalingan. <laughs> Isabel, how are you doing? I'm Where not, are you? I'm not in the car anymore, so we found a place. <laughs> I saw so, it. it yeah. felt so bagay with the show that you were in a car doing an interview, and uh, but you know maybe we get stable connection like this. I know. I was like, it was perfect. It's Bridgestone, and I'm in the car, so we came from a site. So we actually came from the mountains. So, oh. um, but very important. So we made sure that we were going to be present for you guys. You but I the found a cafe. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, first, let me start by saying thank you. Thank you for accepting the uh, the invitation to come on the show. Really appreciate it. And um, you know, lots to discuss here. And I'm glad, glad that you're you're the person I'm talking to about this. So, um, how are you so far? I'm good. You know, I'm really good. I'm I'm going through my renovations, and I'm I'm getting a little bit more of a sneak peek into your world, and. Uh, yeah, it's there are definitely revelations on my part, right. and um, I guess we don't want to dwell too much, obviously, on on issues or on issue. But I think just exactly. to give context to people and stuff like that, 
Um, it's a very, very simple thing. Um, I'm just decorating my apartment right now, renovating it. And I have uh, an architect come in, design the place. And then I also brought in a decorator. But I, I didn't realize there were some issues between decorators and designers. And I think I stepped on some toes. Obviously, I said some things that maybe in hindsight does, doesn't age too well. And uh, on the a few things were said that obviously didn't come across too well, but we're pushing forward today because what yeah, this I mean, is about learning yeah. about each other, what we do, what you do, where the overlap is, and if there's a possibility to coexist. So with that being the premise, what would you like to start off with, Isabel? All right. So um, first, we would like to say thank you for giving us this platform. Honestly, um, I don't want to call that an issue anymore because at least now we have this uh, window of opportunity that we can introduce our profession. Actually, not introduce, educate um, others about our profession. And would you like me to just start? I mean, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, first, what, what, what is exactly that you as interior licensed interior designers do? Yes, actually, when, once you call yourself an interior designer, that is already considered um, licensed. So you don't have to go licensed interior designer because once you call yourself an interior designer, um, salo, that's already licensed. So we can do away with um, licensed interior designer. So basically, um, we are, it's a recognized profession. Uh, we've been around since 1998. We started with the Republic Act 8534. And then now um, we are already under the act of um, 10350, which I know you've been seeing around. So um, this is an updated app, uh, act. So basically, the state recognizes the importance of the interior design profession in nation building, as I'm a quote. Um, the thing is, uh, one of the recurring thing that we keep seeing is what is the difference between a professional and a non-professional? Is that right? That's yes, what you really wanna, and the, yeah. the overlap. I think there's a lot of confusion with the overlap, but yes, yeah. let's connect with your uh, the difference between a professional and a non-professional. Yes, I will go straight to that because in detail we can talk about it portion by portion. But I want to focus now on the difference between the professional and the non-professional. So first. Professionals have the technical knowledge. I mean, we studied for that. Me personally, I am a graduate of USD, and I took BS in theory design. Yes, it's a Bachelor of Science. So basically, we do the technical drawings, we do specifications, we do schematic design. We can go on and on. We have um, we have electrical even. A decorator may not have the enough knowledge regarding these technical drawings. Basically. Um, these drawings are also used um, for us to submit to mga building admins for condo, commercial renovations. So that one, we are very much equipped with this technicality. We are interior designers that can de also decorate. Actually, um, that is the icing on the top. So the decoration, accessorizing, that's just something that we are also good at. But that is not our main uh, um, scope of work. Second that I want to point, the difference between a non-professional and a professional is that aside from the law, we are we also have the code of ethics. So this code of ethics is something that we really follow, at least to keep it professional between us and our clients, us and our colleagues, so that we can coexist with one another. And the third is we can be liable. If you are a professional, you are liable for a lot of things. So basically, kung non proka walang habol yung client sayo. So that's one of the major things that we have as a difference yun. So let me know if you have any questions along the way, okay? Okay, well, I'll jump in now because I, I... Yeah. That's a very good... I think people don't... There is a science behind it. And... Um, yeah, sure, yes. the that I, I look back on that has an age well was when I came out. I, it came across the wrong way when I said, you know, uh, do you really need a license for pillows and curtains? Something along those lines. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that, 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 in hindsight, I can see being taken the, the the wrong way by licensed people like yourself. When what I meant was um, the the stuff like the the stuff you're mentioning about schematic drawings and stuff like that, which I had my architect do, who's licensed yeah. to do that. Um, no problem. I totally understand the liability. Totally understand all of the value of that. 
But mm -hmm. with a decorator, if they are just doing that with no schematic drawings, with no actual building, and it's really just, I think you should put your couch here, get this set of uh, fabric for your, your pillows, and then put this. Is there, can you overlap with that? Or do you still, is that still off limits? Because it encroaches into your Yeah. Work. The thing is, I cannot call it an overlap because it's not like a, another profession. So I mm -hmm. want to keep it clear that um, the, the choosing of the fabric, uh, the choosing of the sofa, you can actually hire an interior designer. I do understand that some people think that it might be too expensive because it's a bit intimidating for them. But there are a lot of ways that we can actually work around your budget. It doesn't mean like if you hire a professional, ay, mahal yan. Um, there are also different of levels. Like honestly, you can even get somebody who's like freshly licensed to do the picking of the colors for you. If you do not want to go through the whole scope of work, meaning us providing for the drawings, we can do consultation. It's also part of our um, professionalism that we also do. Depends. There's a per hour. We can do consultation, like regarding decorating. So um, this is something that we also want to push. That um, under the act, we do have a lot of these elements. You don't have to get the full scope. You can get the consultation part of it. So if budget is an issue, we can always work around the budget. That's one thing that is always like discussed. I'm mahal to get an ID. But honestly, in the long run, if you do get a professional, it saves you a lot of money because from the beginning, you guys plan for the architect, for the engineers, you do the layout. So it saves the client really like a lot of money in the long run, it's like walang tibagan when you enter the house. So yeah. that's what we want to like really make people understand. Well, some of the things that I understood that I, I did before were, of course, I did have full respect for the schematic drawings, etc. But yeah. the things that I learned in this discussion this week were um, like even the choice of materials, there is a science too. Like maybe if you're yeah. doing your own room or something like that, you won't feel that. But if you're doing this, uh, a larger space or a commercial space especially when you're dealing with things like okay you put, might put a surface there either on the floor or the walls that may do 20 percent more energy you know or energy yes. loss or stuff yes. like that just right. i get that now i understand that there's the mood thing which some people might say subjective some people might say absolutely not there's psychology mm -hmm. behind the colors but what i guess what i'd like to ask on behalf of, of decorators is there room for them do you see compromise where there can be room for them to operate or is it really just as clear as if it falls into our scope of work you really should get the license for that? Do you see I will always, yeah right now i always uh would like everybody to go back like you can practice as a professional because there is a law that is protecting um, us from, you know, from from practicing. I mean, there's there's it takes years for us to become an interior designer, like what you were saying for fabric. Um, there is a science behind it. We also would like also to say that our our as professionals, we can even do hospitality. We can also we studied about you know deciding also for medical um, for medical use. For example, um, on my end. For my thesis, um, it was about designing spaces for special children. So yes, we do study about materials because it's very important, which is why we also have the CPD. It's called the Continuing Professional um, Continuing Professional Development. It's because we know that times do change. So sometimes we do have to abide with like lead or like energy saving. So um, when you're talking about if there's room for them, I mean, um, they can de they can decide and uh, they can decorate. I'm sorry, they can they do decorate. But of course, we do encourage all to go through the process of becoming a licensed interior designer because there is a lot of responsibility of becoming a designer. I mean, choosing your color, choosing your fabric. You think it's just aesthetics, but honestly, there's a whole psychological effect to it. There's a science to it, and uh, I mean, I do encourage all to at least. Um, go through the process of it. Go to school, take the board exam. Um, there's a lot of things that they can learn pa, than just decorating. I mean, they have the talent. I mean, we, we, they have the talent and they have the creativity. That's something that, you know, that you also cannot learn in school, but you can still, you know, make the most out of it if they uh, become professionals. That's a, that's, a, that's a good point. I guess um, I, I'm now completely, I'm now understanding the, the issue more because of when yeah. these nice dialogues not just with you but even during the week 
and hearing, taking it away from the heat. <laughs> and yeah. then, um, <laughs> That's why we're so thankful that you opened your doors also to us because yeah. I do know that, yeah, education really is the best. I mean, we've been, uh, we've been here a long time, but you know, um, now it's just being, you know, talked about because we, there's this thing. <laughs> yes. And, and for me, I, I, I've always been, I've always believed in pushing forward. So it's right. always one of those things that if you get, especially now, if it un inadvertently became an issue, it wasn't planned that way, but okay, now you've got attention on the topic. Let's use mm -hmm. it as a learning moment. Um, mm -hmm. you, you bring up very, very good points. And the only thing that I guess some people will feel is like, all right, but there is still a threshold that I can't afford that. So I'm just looking for, I have a 25 squares uh, SMDC apartment. And uh, I just don't know where the, the best use of the, no, I don't care so much about the space, meaning scientifically the balance of the mood and the colors, but could they get, there's a whole new industry of, of online decorators coming in and just saying, okay, put your couch here, do that. Is there a way where they can study, but not go through the whole course or do they have to go? I'm not trying to make things to meet your, no, your course. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Can, can, cause, I'm trying to think of the barrier of entry for both the decorators and the clients. So on the decorator side, they're saying, I don't, how much is the school going to cost? How much time versus just for me to help in this space? I won't touch anything to do with schematic drawings. I won't touch anything to do with building code or anything technical like that. I just like to, you know, dress things up. Um, can they start small or is it really, you got to go through a full three year course? To get your license. Uh, you have to um, go through the whole year. Actually, um, if I may tell you the, uh, the requirements, you go through education. So there are a lot of accredited schools already in the Philippines. And then you have to go through the experience through apprenticeship. And then you take the board exams, which is three days long. And then this is where like you have to study everything, interior design, furniture, construction, materials, decoration, history interior construction, color theory, ethics. And then uh, once you pass, you, you go under the PAID. I mean, uh, this is the only accredited professional organization for us. So this is something that will guide us um, all the way. So if you're asking me if they can start small, again, I'll say creativity is, is wonderful, but at the end of the day, technical drawings is something also that you know sets us apart from, from the, the decorators. And if you do want to renovate on a condominium, the building admin will ask for requirements, and that's something that we can provide as professionals. Okay, price is going to be a barrier for them. Have you personally accepted anything? What's the lowest job you could accept? Um, any job for us is, you know, it, it's okay depending on the client. Remember, our job is also very, if you can customize it regarding to the needs of your client. So let's just say um, they want to renovate. I've had one, 50,000, let's renovate. Go ahead. Um, uh, Budget-wise for like um, my professional fee, that's yeah. why you start adjusting it to fit into their budget. Because number one, interior design is not all about getting the job done. It's really making lives better for everyone. We have that responsibility behind us. Now, these people actually live in these homes and how do we make this home better for them? Not only in the aesthetic way, but it's everything. Like, honestly, when you start spending for your own space, I know you've gone through this. You don't want to just lie down and go, oh, shocks, there's something not, you know, right. So yeah. we do a holistic, a holistic design. It's really not just all about, you know, the colors, the furniture. It really is everything. The lighting takes a lot of effect. We study about this. So, um, yeah, you can start small, honestly, you can talk to your designers, you can go through the PAID, ask us for those who are, you know, um, newly licensed, it can give you a very good rate. So actually, you can even show your pegs, and we study it, and then we, we form something for you. You know, honestly, it's very costly, you can talk to us, don't be intimidated by the, by the designers. So you can start because there's so many members, I guess, what I'm um, hearing is that you can get a fresh grad that won't charge anywhere near the same as somebody who's been doing it for right. five years, 10 years, et cetera. So there are, it suits different budgets. Mm -hmm. okay, that's a, that's right. a good answer. I'll just play devil's yeah. advocate. Um, if Go ahead. Some, but it's my <laughs> home. I can do whatever I want. My home, my rules. So if I'm willing yeah. to accept, um, you know, whatever my, my neighbor happens to just decorate, you know, on the side, and I just let mm -hmm. my neighbor do it, 
and I don't really have any legal issues. Are they allowed to do that or are they breaking the law themselves too, meaning the client? Um, yeah, here, if it's your own space, that's no problem. I mean, that's your home, that's your DIY. But if you start getting into contracts, then there can be a problem. If you start dealing now with bid, bid, um, building admin, dealing with contractors, dealing with your architects, that is where the problem lies. I mean, but if it's just your own space, you want to do your own DIY, that's no problem. It's just that there are a lot of requirements, like for example, condominiums or commercial spaces, like walls require, and it's something that we can provide. This is just a random question and I haven't thought it through, so please don't judge me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> kind of related to the first one where I was talking about, is it, do you think PIID or PSID or any of the schools can offer a new course, like you talked about adjusting to the times, where they say, you know what, we're gonna offer a decorator's course. It's much, much less in terms of requirements for than an interior design course, but we obviously see a growing market here that needs to be licensed or will benefit from a license, but we'll bring the cost down to this and we'll now accredit this bunch of people. Do you see that being a possibility? Um, I'll just let me correct, correct um, quickly. PAID is the, um, it's an organization, so it's not a school. So this is the Philippine Institute of Interior Designers. PSID is the school. So um, the good thing about PSID, I came from USD, so it was a four-year course. But with PSID, you can take a two-year um, interior design course as long as you've already taken your majors um, already in another university. So that is a quicker way of turning yourself into an interior designer. If I can just quickly um, say... Um, I'll actually quote this from someone. A definition of an interior decorator has no formal training. They have the talent, but no formal trainer. An interior designer can also be a, a graduate of accredited schools, then get this license. So if you do want to be a decorator, I don't think we'll have a course for that. I mean, um, that's the point of becoming a professional is that you do have to take the, the requirements by law okay. yeah so i also i also have to be you know very respectful that you're yeah. not the laws, right so yeah, this is why when, when i ask i'm just asking it's a law it's a law it's it's yeah. whether you agree with it or not since so, 1998 yeah because yeah, i can just imagine some people i'm trying to picture people listening going what wait hang on i just because that's how that's kind of where the tone went you know because right. a lot of us didn't have the benefit of learning from this conversation so we were drawing from a, a bit of a shallower pool of saying mm -hmm. An to, you know but then now mm -hmm. that we that's realize the, yeah. the value of what you do um i'm seeing the picture here now it's getting clearer and clearer for me what about between let's say licensed architects and interior designers because now we have in what we perceive as an overlap, but both are licensed. Is there friction there too? Are they allowed to do interiors, architects? Yeah. Honestly, um, can I just uh, state from my experience? I mean, uh, we, uh, I've been working with amazing architects too, uh, younger than me, older than me. Like I am actually in Mindanao. I heard you ask me a while ago. So I'm in Mindanao, but there are very few interior designers here. So I worked with a little bit old school architects too, and then they realize the importance of having of coexisting together um right now i have a project um, and i'm working with ivory builders the, the, the group of architects and engineers and the perfect situation really is uh the client will will give us the the lot the the, the plan the architects and the engineers will start doing the initial drawings then come in interior designer interior designer starts changing something because we know the need of the client um, and then there's some things that we see that architects don't see. There are also some things that I don't see that architects do see. So the perfect uh, working environment really is that we coexist because it makes the project very harmonious. I mean, um, our, the thing is, our, our architectural interiors cover the detailed planning and preliminary designs. Interior design, on the other hand, covers a specialized planning. So I hope you got that part now. Interior designers are into the specialized planning of the of the architectural plan, so there shouldn't really be an overlap. For me, um, it starts it, it's it's a, it should be a start already of a um, harmonious environment between all like architects, engineers. I know that there's also some issues there, 
that you know that pops up in the internet but honestly once you guys work together the project will be faster it will be better for the client at the end of the day you're, you're always prioritizing the needs of your client and then it's going to be less apple less expensive because they're not all the changes will be the plans and then all you got to do is implement it so as okay. much as possible everything all the changes you do are on the plans so regardless if it takes three months for you guys to do planning, drawing with the architects and the engineers, it's okay because once the construction implementation starts, it's just going to be a breeze. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we, we have, well, it, it's it's tricky, isn't it? No, because sometimes it we're... It's tricky, but yeah, much, it's good that we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's really tricky because I feel that a lot of people feel that this is so personal and emotional so that they should have that choice. They don't yeah. feel that it's something like... Uh, um, if it's medical or if it's construction, it's very, it's, mm -hmm. those are very hard lines drawn there. It's like, okay, no, yeah, it's it doctor is. and you go to a, but yeah, when it, it, you start opening up to these subjective things, people, right. and the people don't see that anything life-threatening with it. This is where, like, when I posted the thing about my architect, I actually thought that would, in a way, was helping my position because I was saying, hey, my, this guy's life. <laughs> And they're saying, yeah, but he's licensed as an architect, not as an engineer. Like, oh my God, I went a little further down the hole as well. But okay, I'm learning. And that's the point of this is to learn and to teach people about the industry. What yeah. sort of costs are involved in this? Can you give people a ballpark from, let's say, those fresh grads that you were talking about to a, well, the man's super pangalan, but let's say somebody with five or 10 years experience. You charge per square meter roughly, right? I know you can't give Me us an answer. But if people are looking for a ballpark, what sort of fees are we looking at to engage an interior design? Here, the thing is, it depends on your scope. You can actually adjust your contract. There are times that if the, uh, if the, if the project is smaller, let's just say 50 square meters, you can put your rate to almost 1,500 per square meter to 1,200. If the place though gets bigger, you, you have to lower your rates, which is why this is also part of the law. I mean, um, it, we cannot overcharge, so that's that's where where we can avoid scammers, because um, there's a rate that we're kind of trying to promote, and then there's also another scheme where yeah. you do it per room or per house. So let's just say a house, a room could cost you around, seguro. I mean, it varies depending on the designer and the level, okay? So let's just say a room could cost you around like fifteen thousand to like thirty. So and that's a really talented professional fee to yeah. prepare. Okay. Yeah, um, it depends really. It depends. Honestly, sometimes some of our designers they do charge per square meter on drawings and then they do per visit. So it really depends. But we usually don't do percentage of the project. That's something I will personally I don't do that. So it really is depends it depends on the scope that you are offering your clients. If it's just purely drawings and technical drawings, you can put it to at least like let's say um five hundred to one thousand, depending. So it depends on your scope of work really. Okay. One thing yeah. that also surprised me just when we were doing the sound check, um, I really didn't know this either, that you're not ethically allowed to advertise your services. Is that did I get that it's right? Under, it's under our code of ethics. We're not allowed to advertise. <laughs> like I can't put my number right here and tell call me for you know for design. But you can always visit um, our, our our website. You can always visit in our Facebook BIID. You can even check licensed professionals on the PRC website. And um, the thing about on, on our end, we seguro on our end, and then we got a push on the marketing side also of you know of interior designers. I mean we we we. we see that much YouTube channels. I mean, um, I, these are little, yeah, very rare. Because that. that was also another thing that I said that now I've, I've learned with new information, because I was saying you can market yourselves like like these online decorators are doing it. Yumpala yeah. is actually an ethical um, there's a reason for it. You're not allowed to. Um, is that is that something that uh, should be lifted maybe? Or, or is there a reason? Maybe not lift up. Is there a reason that I don't understand why you can't market yourselves? Well, um, of course, we gotta. It's under the code of ethics, 
So that's something that you know I we follow as licensed interior designer. If if we need further explanation or uh, we can we can go ask actually the PAI regarding this one. But honestly, I see nothing wrong with it. I mean, um, I can I can post. Actually, we did ask about it. Like if, if having a YouTube channel is going against the code of yeah. ethics, so it was clarified that it wasn't because it's personal. Is so it? yeah, it is it is personal. Yeah. But oh, putting so it's art, it's allowed to have a YouTube channel. It is because it's personal. So same as doctors, like they can have um, a YouTube channel showing, like you know, um, uh, showing YouTube. their profession. But yeah. they don't really advertise themselves as you know. That I know that's not allowed. Also, no, yeah. I know that. Same, with, with yeah, the, same as ours. I yeah, totally understand the doctors, doctors because it's you, whether you're promoting. It, it seems weird to say. You know, I hope you get sick. Come to me. So that that's how I have understood the reasoning exactly. behind it. doctors <laughs> and, and even lawyers. It's like you know, this is something that shouldn't be. Yeah, you shouldn't be pushing for it. But so I would right. think your design, which is purely by choice. Um, exactly, because you, marketing and advertising yeah. is different. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's different. So we can't advertise, but we can market ourselves. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Here today, yeah. Isabel. I'm learning a lot, and I, you know, even for a Tito like me, that means I know. lots of room to grow here and learn. So I, I, I don't, I don't have the uh, solution for you know how to coexist, etc. But I mean, I hope that through this discussion, we've partially been able to at least, well, one, remove the the tension away from the the, the different factions and stuff, because nothing gets done when when things are like that. And number two is to maybe hopefully through dialogue we can get to find a way place where people can coexist because as you mentioned which is very important the world is changing so right. you have to be revisiting it. it might be there might be room now to maybe develop a specific dedicated decorators course that just deals with decorating just so that people um like these online decorators have sprouted up have a place to to grow that's not going to infringe on the licensed uh, interior decorator i also like the point you made that there's no such thing as license or unlicensed if you're an mm -hmm. interior designer, you should be licensed. That's a nice you're point. You're an interior designer, yeah. That's it. Yeah, if you're an interior designer, designer there's yeah, no such thing. Are license. you a licensed doctor or a non-licensed doctor? There's no exactly, such thing. Exactly, yeah. There's no such thing. Are you an architect or a licensed architect? Yeah. Yeah. So lots of things I picked up today. And if I picked them up, I'm sure a lot in the crowd of today have picked that up as well. So yes. there's definitely, yeah. it's a good starting point. 30 minutes is mm -hmm. not enough to change the world but it's certainly a step in the right direction so i thank you isabel for coming on the yes. show thank you there's also something that i want to like open up um sure, the thing is other countries such as dubai is already looking up um to our id code of the philippines and we are very proud of that um philippines is one of the first ones really who who professionalized the the the, the interior design so Dubai is actually consulting with us also. So that's one thing that you know that that sums up for those those working on that. So that's one thing that I wanted to share. Like okay. little by little, we will be recognized around the world. Right now, it's we it's one step at a time, really. It is one step at a time, and I, I hope on the side also of um, the LIDs as well that we could also. Yeah. Maybe a little patient while we while this space finds its space because um, right. there's uh there's going to be some people that are still not going to un understand. I mean, I thought I was exposed, but I there was a lot that I didn't know as well, and um, I I've obviously very now famously this week contracted. <laughs> no, actually, it's not a contract. It's 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 really just a friendship thing that hey, I've done in my head. I'm I'm fully licensed doing what I've done, and then can you help me choose the balance color? Um, then I realized where the where the sensitivities were, but obviously I'm that's already done. It's, okay. it's a learning curve. I mean, even people can learn at a later stage of you know it's fine. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of I know there's a lot of room for improvement also. So if there's anything that you know we're open for discussion, you know even RAs Republic Acts you know they changed. Ours was from 1998. It's um, we improved it in 2012. So things can still change. I mean. One thing that we want to push really is that licenses are important since these are always asked in doing big commercial projects such as malls, hotels, government. So if you do want to do that and then specialize in something, you need a license. Yeah. So yeah, that's so, why we're very strict for that one. 
So that's very true. Yeah, but you know, creativity, we cannot stop creativity. If you want to do your house, do your DIY, it's okay. That's your own home. I'm glad you, you can said call that. Yeah, you can call us to consult. That's fine. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Thank you, Isabel. Yeah. And we'll talk to you Thank again you so the soon. And uh, yeah. hopefully, I can give you a tour of my place when it's totally finished. <laughs> yes, when I'm back and you stay safe. You too. Thank you very yeah. much, Isabel. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Thank you to all those who are listening. All righty. That was Isabel Cagalingan from uh, one of our licensed interior designers, who I now know is just now an interior designer. You don't have to say license anymore because they all, if they carry that title, interior designer, that already implies they have a license, just like a doctor. And I hope you learned a lot from that. And I, yes, I, I know there was a ton of questions we didn't get down to because there's also a raffle that we have to do. And I realize that we're just going to scrape just the top here today. But the most important thing was opening up the dialogue and starting it off on the correct note because it started off on the wrong foot. And once that happens, people stop listening and you don't get anything done. So by opening up the dialogue this way, we now have a good direction to go where we can both listen to each other and find the space. And I'm hoping that soon enough we get to get to a day where we can find a happy space where co decorators can coexist with designers and nobody steps on each other's toes. But for now, I think just to summarize my learnings from it, um, there's a lot more to interior design than I think meets the eye than most people think. This involves a Bachelor of Science, which means that they do understand and study schematic drawings, building code. Uh, materials are also, there's a lot involved in studying materials because it's not just visual, it's not aesthetics. There's purpose to each material. And some of them, especially if you're working with a big space, can end up costing you big money if you make the wrong choice of material. So there's a no-brainer there when it comes to the value that they bring to the industry and to clients themselves. The problem that we're still hoping to solve in time is that there is also a space there of people who cannot afford decorator or designers and they start off with what they feel decorators is that step forward. So maybe if we can work on developing that stepping stone, then it can eventually turn into a feeder series for the designers because I personally do, and this is just a personal opinion, don't feel that a lot of these people who are doing decorating work or getting work done by decorators are necessarily clients that would go to interior designers. But if they get that stepping stone and they have a good experience, that's something to aspire to is to get to a licensed designer, both for the client and for the decorator who wants to improve their craft. Because you simply just can't do commercial projects without license. So it's nice to hear Isabel also being very open-minded about loosening up on the creativity side. If it's your own personal space and you want a BYI or your neighbor comes in, so long as you're not getting into contracts or anything that does the buildings, you're not stepping on anyone's toes. And from there, it's a great starting point, don't you think? Or at least it's a better starting point than where we were, where we were on Sunday or Monday. So there, we move forward. And that, the goal is always to just be better than yesterday. And I think we've done that. So right now, the only way we can make this better is... Thank you also to Lee Gong. You have that thing there because Lee Gong have been proud sponsors of our raffle portion. They're not sponsoring the prize. They're sponsoring the raffle portion because Lee Gong International uh, have this online promotion. And they will be also, they're looking at giving away a nice scale model as well. But Lee Gong have been supporting our raffle promos for a little while now. But the prize is coming from CWC. So thank you for that, Lee Gong as well now let's move on to the prize because i know what do we got here 2005 2052 people are tuned in right now for this raffle and we made them wait a little bit longer than normal rockets uh, not in the mood today to he's just i don't know what it is maybe it's a chair but rockets feeling a little bit rocket everyone's looking forward to you pressing the button rocket so don't let them down press You want to see what people were asking me about my chair? I'll show you. Let's see, X don't turn around, huh? You're identical. 
Baron won the chair. Are you kidding me? Oh, wait, no, it's supposed to be there. Ah, there. <laughs> Congratulations to Karen who won the chair. I can't believe this. This is just crazy. Oh, Yanni, you've won 2,000 juices from Hippon, Yo Hippon, David, Dennis, David, Makapangal. You've also won 2,000 pesos in GCs from our friends at uh, Yo Hippon. But can we go back to the Karen? Oh, what's her name? Karen what? I got to see that. That's pretty crazy. Oh, man, Karen, you are going to be one happy person. I tell you what, Karen Malen. Oh, geez. Ah, we'll post that up in just a second. We'll put that in the comment section as well. But that is congratulations, Karen. What a big win for you. Malenab Ambrosio, I think. We'll double check the, the full name. But congratulations if you saw your name. And for you guys who didn't win, I'm really sorry about that. I know how much all of you were waiting for it. But don't go away yet because they are giving away over 50% off on that share. From 87,000, it's down to 30 what? 36? 36,000. Now, I know 36,000 sounds crazy for a chair. But like I said, I've... It's the one thing I really invested in. Um, I really went out and spent my own money to get a Herman Miller chair because I really do see the value on it. It's like there's several things that I kind of very, very particular about. Uh, and these are, I'll just give you three things I'm very particular about. Uh, my bed, my chair, and my car. Why? Because you usually spend a third of your life in each. At least in Metro Manila, you'll spend a third of your life in your car. So I have my van all set up the way I do. And then the, the bed is always a tempore because of the... It's a third of your life. So yes, it's 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 pricey. Yes, it, it seems like it's hard to justify. But when you spend a third of your life in there and sleep is one of the most important things that you can have, it's worth the investment. So now a chair is the other third of my life now because of work from home. So there's really, it adds up. If you can't afford to get a chair right now, there's never been a better time because it's on sale for over 50% off. And it's a Herman Miller. I can't believe that. I can't believe that they're doing that because that's just... That's crazy. Also, before we go, thank you. And a big, big, big thank you uh, from the bottom of our hearts to Bridgestone Philippines who have been supporting the clock since day one. You guys have been amazing because you brought not just the show to more people. You brought hope to people. You brought comfort to people. People have really looked at the clock, especially during the heart of the pandemic, a heart of ECQ as being their companion online. And that's all thanks to Bridgestone. So we really do appreciate all of your support for that and we also look forward to seeing you again next friday we're going to have the same old thing we're going to have all great prizes great topics but most of all we're going to have great people which is you so thanks for being those people for us and until then be kind to one another wash your hands bye everyone fancy me in my internet Couldn't help but notice Your smile While everybody else Around us is surfing About Can we just stop And chat a while Get away from These grey and boring Lonesome days of our Quarantine Early yet to say What lies ahead It's just the first day Of the rest of our lives Love could be waiting At the end of this quarantine Let's stop and talk a while Let's stop and talk a while